Ah, shalom chavrim, shalom, shalom, shalom to everybody that's watching. Do I have to talk loud because the camera's way away? I want them to see. Sorry, I'm sorry. Mm. Okay, anyway, what are you eating? Mm. Are we live? Yes, you're live. Mm. Sorry, guys. Okay. See what happens when you switch sides? I'm eating toffee fei. Guys, do you know that? This one, toffee fei. It looks nasty. It must taste like coffee. It's no. It's caramel with chocolate and a hazelnut. Oh, it's so good. It's a sin. And it's doctor prohibited from me, but I couldn't resist. Another one is vermont candy. See that? Let me see. The maple this. candy. Let it's so this. good. Oh, it's not much left in here. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That's all that's left? Mm. I don't eat this stuff. I don't like maple candy. Both are from... Um, Butterscotch is what I like. Cracker Barrel. That's cracker where you barrel. can get it. But you know what? I mean, these are addicting and that's my sin. I repent. I'm not supposed to do that. Okay. I agree. Well, Cracker Barrel, mm. send us some money for this advertisement we just did. For oh, them. I don't know. Let's ask them. Oh, well. If they will. Probably give not. Us Probably not. <laughs> All right, at any rate, we have switched sides. Uh, my wife wishes I was born left-handed. I couldn't be left-handed, Stevie. We would be more complimenting each other. Yeah. My dad is left-handed, but I'm not, so. I don't like that sign here. Anyway, we got some very interesting things going on in the news. Let me get rid of these emails that I have here, though, on the screen. Hey, before we get started, though, Yanka, there's one thing I wanted to bring up very, on a very serious note. Um, we got in a letter, and of course this has been a while back, all the way back right at the 1st of February. Um, and as I was going through entering in the, 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 the um, addresses in our database, this was one letter that came in from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. There was no address, no return address on there, but it was someone that wanted to help support the ministry. and. Out of all the email, excuse me, out of all the letters that I'm going through there to try to catch up on these things, um, I stopped in the middle of doing the addresses because I felt my heart to open this letter, and I did. And when I did, uh, it was a sister that had, just like in the case of the woman that come to uh, Jesus with the blood issue. Mm -hmm. And then I realized why um, this happened. And uh, sister... Let me just say this. I did pray for you at that very moment. And I really believe that God has healed you of that issue. And uh, But anyway, thank you and God bless you. I, I, never, I always try to make sure. I, I do pray over mail when it comes in regardless because there's, you never know. There's people writing about all different kinds of things. I, I've got a stack of letters here where people are just writing me long letters about issues that they want to share with us. And that takes a lot of time to go through those. But prayer request is important. And maybe if you could, when you send in your, uh, send us a letter like that or something, if you got prayer, maybe just put off to the side there prayer and then REQ just as a request so that that doesn't miss our attention. But anyway. <clears throat> Let's get into what's going on, Yanka. You were, you had sent this to me yourself. Uh, some of these uh, news issues that are going on, and I need to get the right one because uh, the first one here: Sanhedrin uh, attributes a mass shooting epidemic to a lack of adherence to Noahide laws. Breaking Israel News has put this out here, and uh, <laughs> and people say that. The Noahide laws are no big deal. Nothing's going to happen. Right. How it's, do you respond to that? Well, I respond to that that they are either blind to what is really truly going on and how nations, which they call 70 nations, but, you know, they have this organization of 70 nations with Nikki Haley at the head of it, and they all have signed up on specifically Noahide laws, and they see in a United Nation and all over the world and in United States of America that they claim that we are nation based and founded upon Noahide laws, they are seeing Noahide laws as a solution 
to all the mankind's problem as a solution to peace. In fact, yesterday in our chat, Steve, I showed you right. a rabbi who was talking about seven steps to peace and security, and that was he was talking about Noahide laws. And as we see, Sanhedrin attributes mass shootings, just like they attributed uh, abortion laws in New York back then, to, to the uh, fact that, oh, we need Noahide laws to impose on the nations. We need courts of law to impose the Noahide laws to assure that all of these evils that Gentiles do will never happen again because it's the Jewish people that have this ethics and they are the light to the nations and they need to impose the Noahide laws on the Gentile nations. And if you know these are using the Israel Bible in a quotation, uh, in, in a yeah, parenthesis. Yeah, I actually have that on there. Let me blow that really? up so people, we make sure they can see this without exception here. Now, the Israel Bible is the Bible that we said that uh, contains Noahide laws specifically. This is the most... It's Talmudic. It, 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 all the Talmudic yes, commentaries yes. are included and in And there are this. Christian evangelical leaders and Hebrew roots leaders and Messianic leaders that are on website of the Israel 365 promoting right. Israel Bible. And Israel Bible has been sold right now in thousands upon thousands among Christians. Right. So they are accepting it. I want to share something with the listeners uh, today that are that are following along. Let me just make sure that we're not having any uh, problem with our uh, with the uh, broadcast here. Uh, if you guys just give us thumbs up, make sure that we're we're here that you're hearing what we're saying. That's important to us as well. We don't have any issues there. Uh, but and then I'll come back and just check that in just a second. But we're talking about, okay, good, thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. So we'll go back to the article here. And then let me share something here, uh, Yanka, that I brought up. You know, you had me uh, read this book here uh, a little while back called The Holocaust Victims Accused. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand, I mean, we're against gun violence. We're against all these murders that are happening. The only difference is, is we expose who's behind a lot of this. And not every gun shoot, shooting in America is uh, some staged event. Uh, we know this. We know it for a fact because the Texas massacre at the church there that happened, uh, John Holcomb ha happens to be a friend of ours, so we know uh, the truth behind that and of course what the media never spoke about it was actually the fact that the citizens of Texas have that right to bear arms based on the Second Amendment and they're the ones that actually stopped that gunman. Uh, they wounded him, he did bleed to death, they put it later in the news that oh he committed suicide. They don't want you to know that truth. But at any rate the reason I wanted to bring this up is because what a lot of people are not aware of uh, and especially what we're fixing to go into on some of the things that Shapiro is saying once again is letting me know there's coming not only an economic collapse in this nation, Yana, uh, but a major implosion in this nation. I think it's being orchestrated intentionally, just like in the case of Germany, Europe, to make the exodus of Jews there, to go to create the state of Israel. I think they're going to intentionally do that to this nation here. This is what's been happening for years to force the American Jews to go to the Middle East. This is why they're conquering all the lands there because there's not enough room to put them all in the state of Israel. That's why they need the West Bank. Uh, they, they, they need Gaza. They need Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, they need all these lands and this is what's going to happen. But we can prove scripturally that what they're saying has been fulfilled. But I want to share though uh, so people can see this is something that was being done long ago. Uh, it's being done even now. There's no difference uh, then as it is now. This is from that book, Holocaust Victims Accused There. I want you to see what the ideology of Zionists were because it's the Zionists that are in control of the state of Israel and it is the Zionists who have partnered with Christian evangelicals in order to continue this agenda. It was uh, Trump's own man, um, uh, what's his name there, uh, that, that I met personally uh, here in outside of Orlando that said that he and Trump were uh, hardcore Zionist. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I forget, why do I forget well, people's I, names? I forgot it now too. But anyway, 
Here in the book, let me just show you, and I highlighted this in yellow for you. In the year 1905, the riots and pogroms that broke out in Russia were welcomed with blessings by the Jewish socialists who together with their Russian counterparts consoled themselves that Jewish blood was good grease for the wheels of the revolution. The Zionist leaders saw the spilt Jewish blood of the Holocaust as grease for the wills of the Jewish national state. Mm. Roger right? Stone. Now, I got one more. Roger Stone, thank you. Yes, it was Roger Stone that told <laughs> yes. me that, right? Now, again, you go to the next page here, and, and I'm sorry, our windows are so thin in this little house here that uh, we pick up every noise and we got the neighbors mowing grass. So if you hear that distraction, that's what that is. All right, again, this is in 1943, Yitzhak uh, Greenbaum addressed a meeting in Tel Aviv on the subject, the diaspora and the redemption, in which he stated, now keep in mind, before I tell you this, uh, that uh, Mr. Greenbaum, uh, at the time when he stated this, he was the chairman of the acting committee for the rescue of Euro European Jewry, and which is at the bottom of the page right here. But he states here, for the rescue of the Jews in the diaspora, we should co consolidate our ac uh, excess strength and the surplus of powers that we have. When they come to us with two plans, the rescue of the masses of Jews, the rescue of the masses of Jews in Europe, or the redemption of the land, I vote without a second thought for the redemption of the land. The more said about the slaughter of our people, the greater the minimization of our efforts to strengthen and promote the hybridization, hebraization, hebraization, right, like Hebrew, hebraization of the land. If there would be a possibility today of buying packages of food with the money of the Karin Hayasod, which is United Jewish Appeal, to send it through Lisbon, would we do such a thing? No. Once again, no. This is, this is just two issues of thousands that have happened of the murder of the Jewish people. So when we are exposing this Zionist agenda that's going on, you have to understand, we're not against our Jewish brothers and sisters that were slaughtered. And this is written by Orthodox Jews. Just like we have Orthodox Jews in America that say that what's going on in the state of Israel is completely wrong. Well, they are asking Gentile nations, Christians, to repent, to cry, to be sorry for yeah. persecution and murder of Jews. What they're not saying is that was themselves, their own leaders, their own blood, their own people who were killing them. It yes. was not the Christians who believe on Jesus Christ. So they're shifting the blame that, that's a psychological disorder, Steve. That's a specific psychiatric name. All yes. right. I'm going to find that name, but I know I know that there is no. a specific psychosis. That's the there book. There are people like this. And um, oh, yeah, wow. exactly. And if you can find it, get it. My right. wife found this. Did, Long did, time ago. Didn't I end up paying like $100 just for this one book? That, that, that's out of print, but you know, there is a free PDF that people can still print out and I oh, I did see that yes. I have posted on my Facebook and a lot of people my friends there they were printing it out in numbers because I said they're gonna the the YouTube police is gonna find this and and take it out yes so bless you need those to, people right you need to bless what people the ones that are printing it out right. so that people have access that's right they are actually <laughs> printing it out for future purposes if you need someone people have that book but this is my police you know bless what people <laughs> she's making sure uh, what did you say boy <laughs> no I'm just I just don't want people to get wrong idea right so uh, the point is Stephen that there is a rank and file Jews who are victims to these elite Jews or elite sect of Jews just like the Gentiles are victims okay yeah. we are in it all together this is why it's wrong to clamp all Jews in one bag exactly. because there is that group that has a power grip over the regular Jews and of course they are 
brainwashed through their Judaistic religion and traditions and grandma was you know good Jewish Orthodox woman and she did her mikvahs and she did that and that passes through generations but in her heart they don't see Gentiles as animals they're surprised themselves what we are talking about because you know Stephen women are not allowed to study Talmud in Judaism. Right. They're not right. allowed. They all they can do is ask questions, uh, rabbis. They can go to a rabbi and ask the questions. You know, uh, they're not allowed to study it. They don't accept girls in yeshivas. Okay, and even boys that do not go the path to become rabbis, they also are not allowed to study Talmud. All right. So this is controlled environment. So Leah, a lot of rank and file Jews or secular Jews in Tel Aviv and all, they have no idea of all of this. And a lot of Jewish people came out and they are my source because they're whistleblowers. Yes. Who yes. actually tell us the truth. We don't, we hardly okay. ever get a Gentile source for all the things we're sharing exactly. with you. These are Jews. Now, and and even Shakira admitted that too. Right. He said it's the Jews that are coming against us. No, uh, yeah, well, you're not coming up against them, but their doctrine. And it's a very yeah. bad doctrine. And we will very strongly come against it because it's a different gospel. But what I was trying to say, Steve, could we probably read them that that piece of news uh, about Sanhedrin? And I want to yes. connect what yes. Trump is doing, yes, how he's can. actually playing in and catering to right. Chabad Jews. And I want to tell you, friends, that when they are saying that they need Noahide laws because Gentiles are so animalistic that they're just shoot and kill and they're murderers and they don't know what morals are. Now, did you want to go to this one that we yes. were already on? Uh, Remember, Chabad organization is actually named a cult and a dangerous criminal organization, and it has a hold of our White House through Trump. Yeah. Trump has allowed them in our White House. Now he's not the only then, one, but he's allowed them the go power. To, uh, duck, 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 go. Can you okay. just see it in front of the people? Go to duck, duck. Go. Oh, you're talking about a website? No, it's like, um, it's not a website. Oh, now you know what it's like to be on the left? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Search engine, that's what it is. Click on it. Duck, duck, go. Right, and then let's do Chabad. Criminal. Can't get that on Google, can you? No, Google is very controlled now. Now, is Chabad a racist, criminal, terrorist, Jewish cult? Chabad Lubavitch identified as supremacist criminal cult. Let's keep go moving. Okay, down. Is Chabad a racist criminal terrorist Jewish cult? Let's keep moving, Stevie, please. A Chabad school is not a safe place for a Jewish child. All right? They're doing pedophilia. They're trafficking children, women, organs. Remind you of the um, Catholic Church? Chabad Lubovitch is a religious cult and a criminal organization. Is Chabad the head of Illuminati snake? Jared Kushner belongs to racist criminal organization. Chabad. So does Ivanka Trump. And Sanhedrin is full of Chabad. And all these Noahide laws. Basically, the Chabad is getting grip. And they have influence in all of the governments in the world, Steve. Right. Okay? Now, Jewish supremacy is called Chabad Lubavitch. I mean, let's keep moving down. Chabad Israel. Chabad is not Jewish. So even Jews themselves, among themselves, are very divided over this Chabad cult. Okay? So when they are saying that they need Noahide laws because Gentiles just have animalistic souls, they just don't know how to be good and moral, remember that it's the Chabad Lubavitch with its Schneerson, they're promoters of these Noahide laws, and that had influence on our presidents throughout ages, and these presidents have put those Noahide laws in our public law 10214. Now look what he says here, right there on a Chabad-Israel.com, uh, Rabbi Eliezer Menachem Men Sak Rabbi Shak, who was considered for many years a leader of Orthodox Judaism, advocated a complete boycott of Chabad, its institutions and projects. When asked which religion was theologically closest to Judaism, 
uh, Rabbi Shot responded, Chabad. Now remember, it's through Chabad houses that uh, all of this stuff is done, and they, they are, they, they're growing like mushrooms after rain everywhere. And um, they cooperate with Sanhedrin, I mean, Ginsburg. Yesterday, when I was telling you about uh, Ginsburg and his book, Kabbalah for the Nations, he's a Chabad rabbi, and Israel 365, with its picture of Mark Biltz, okay, that's a Chabad led organization. Yes. So uh, if you don't connect these things, and of course, Trump, our president, is fully involved with that cult. With the Chabad, he works for them. It's permeating right? every so part of American exactly. society, governments, institutions, uh, court systems, you name it, it's everywhere. Exactly. All right, so anyway, um, we're going back to this article right here, though. Let's that, read it together. Okay. Uh, you want to just start from the top here mm -hmm. then? Okay, mm -hmm. two shootings in Ohio, another in Texas, left at least 31 people dead and at least 50 more wounded. A total of four mass shootings in one week left the country really asking difficult questions about this horrifying epidemic of violence. Global horror, but specific message for the Jews in exile. Rabbi uh, Pinchas Winston, a prolific end of days author, emphasized that it is impossible to assign any clear cut historical meaning to these tragic events, adding that the real horror comes from their seemingly random nature. Seemingly random. I, I need to random. mention something here, though, Yana, because in law enforcement, there there are there are elements to a criminal uh, case. In other words, you have to have motive. Uh, you have to, you have to have all these elements that make something a crime. So there is no such thing as just random shootings. There is a motive that is behind that, or it could not even be a crime. So police have to establish those elements of a crime. Now the thing is, even when he mentions here, seemingly these are random, that lets you know that in probably in most cases, like in the case of El Paso, it wasn't this one lone gunman as witnesses say, there were three to four armed mass gunmen. The motive was not has not been identified because they're covering up the motive. In the case of Dayton, Ohio, though, as one of our listeners pointed out to me in the comments there, the gunman there, he killed his sister. She was dating a black guy, so maybe racially motivated, and this is where that shooting takes place there. So one, a different motive altogether, which seems to indicate organized crime for a purpose to bring about a change in our nations and our nation's gun laws where so it's not just random right I believe actually that this is all pre-planned because there's Hegelian dialectic in place we are living in the world of Hegelian dialectic they're causing a problem so they can come up with solution and if you can see the solutions are immediately there look how quickly Sanhedrin is acting with the solution of bringing Noah Hyde laws as a solution to all of this. It was the same thing, Stephen, with the abortion laws in New York when right. they came, that the Sanhedrin Jews and rabbis, oh, we need Noah Hyde laws because, oh, look at all of these abortions. But if you remember, I said back then, Steve, that why don't they clean up their own house first? Look at Israel with their abortion laws. And they have the Ten Commandments, 630 mitzvahs. And they still have uh, abortion laws up till pregnancy, up till nine months of pregnancy, right? Yes. So why don't they clear their own house first before they start yelling at the Goyim nations? Oh, you see how bad you are? You need Noahide laws. So we see that all of these laws passing, all of these happening, is a Hegelian dialectic created problem on purpose by some groups who are literally planning this to happen so they can come up with their Noahide laws solutions. Now, I am now researching Pompeo and Trump getting together about so-called natural laws, Steve. 
they have put right. this natural law that seems like it's a Noahide law that has totally nothing to do with our constitutional laws. Before we but get there, though, get there, let's so, first quickly yes. go what he says in the article. This is, uh, it says, all of humanity forbidden from murder by Noahide laws. Like you said, they're trying to promote Noahide laws here. Yeah. Rabbi Hillel Weiss, the spokesman for the Sanhedrin, informed Breaking Israel News the Sanhedrin will sit this week to discuss the issues of mass killing and proper course of action to prevent these tragedies. Sanhedrin will right? sit. Like, That's wow. right. This yeah. is a sin that cuts across the boundaries of politics. Rabbi Weiss emphasized the prohibition against spilling blood is one of the seven Noahide laws. The United States has got laws against killing too, okay? We already have laws. We don't need another law. Christians have a law of love by Christ. So this son Hayden that is about to go sit and talk about it, they should get a job. Yes, exactly. You know, they should Not get their a job. Sanhedrin job right. either. Governments and leaders, including the United Nations, have ignored this, treating abortion and, and euthanasia as if they were positive acts. Well, as Yana said, here they are bringing up the issue of abortion, and yet Israel led the world with the worst abortion case ever heard known to man. Not only that, the Orthodox community who has the power in Israel to reject it and not allow those Did abortions nothing. to go through, no, they didn't just do nothing. The only thing they were concerned about is that the bill was originally targeting the Orthodox community. At first, they opposed it. Once they realized that it was to help to limit the number of Gentile births, they agreed, they signed on to it. The Orthodox community in Israel signed on to that third trimester abortion up to the time the baby is breaching the womb. So the guilt, take your Sanhedrin to the garbage because exactly. it hypocrites. is hypocrites. hypocrites. Yeah, hypocrites. Jesus says hypocrites. Right, exactly, hypocrites. You know, uh, they mm. don't look at their own house, don't clean their own house, and they're coming out on Gentile nations. Right, and they stay here. The San Adrian is currently working to establish an organization of 70 nations to replace the United Nations. Wow. How many times well, has Yana told that? you guys did this? Did I tell you? How long am I preaching this? They're going to replace the United Nations with the San Adrian as, as the head of the criminal uh, law. Is the you know, they're going to decide the matters of the law right out of Jerusalem. This is why they're moving all of the embassies there. In fact, Steve, I forgot to bring this up to you. There, there is in the news that Israel has a plan for every single nation on this planet to bring embassy to Jerusalem. The reason is How that, long no have I matter, said that? The no matter what citizen you are, what country you belong to, Sanhedrin is going to have a power over you all right yes. to decide over you so that's why i said crazy. and i said it over and over yana back when trump moved the embassy to uh to jerusalem i said you watch you're going to see east jerusalem will be the uh, all the eastern nations which will be the for the on the where the palestinians will have uh, autonomy at west jerusalem will be all the western nations they're going to put their embassies there I knew this was a New World Order move. Yes. It did not surprise me. And I said, Trump is only, he just, all he did was make that first step. And he didn't really make it. All the way back with Bush, they were already planning to yes. put Trump the embassy there. Trump physically did this. He's like a leader and example for all the nations. After Trump did this, all the nations are doing it. Yeah. Slowly but surely, this is going to happen. It will be an international city where Sanhedrin is going to rule. United mm. Nations will be dismantled and power will be transferred to Sanhedrin. This is where we are slowly heading, okay? All right, so, so what article did you want to go to next? The rabbi noted. Let's keep... Okay, keep going with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the net rabbi noted, and in some respects, biblical sources support personal ownership of weapons. In particular, in, uh, the Philistines prevented any Jews from doing metalwork in order to exclude weapons from Israel. All right, so no smith was to be found in all the land. Israel, uh, for the Philistines, were afraid that the Hebrews would make swords or spears, 1 Samuel 13, 19. Care must be taken that a person does not see himself as the ruler, the ultimate authority. Rabbi Weiss cautioned. But He's they, already told you he's going to be in the rule. It's the Sanhedrin, right? right? Only this Sanhedrin. is a perverted understanding of concepts of freedom and liberty. The basis of Noah's law is that Hashem is 
one and only he has the authority to give life or take it away. And if he's the one who has authority, why are you planning Sanhedrin beheadings? And now it's officially on the, on the website that yeah. beheading for any violation of any. So who has any a of the seven Noahide laws? Which, by the way, the seven Noahide laws, in their opinion, do not apply to Jews, only to Gentiles. Only to Gentiles. So guess who's going right. to get killed? The Gentiles. Only Gentiles. Right. And again, see, establishing a court a system. A court system of justice is also one of the Noahide laws. It is incumbent upon the society to enforce this to prevent the spilling of blood. Tell me, Steve. But there's going to be more blood spilled when they set up the court because they're going to be the executioner. Yes. Well, they're going to give it to the Freemasons, 21st degree. Remember what Talmud says for Gentile? One witness is enough. Yeah. And no due process. Yes. That's totally contrary planning. to the Bible that's, where you have to exactly. have two or three witnesses. Right, but that, that only for Jews. That only for Jews. That's the, This is what Talmud teaches openly. You can't deny it. It's in there. It's not misunderstood like Brown says. It's there. That's under their halakha. Okay, the two, three witnesses are only for the divine Jews. And the one witness uh, and fifth uh, killing of that Gentile who is in violation is in a Talmud as, as their prescribed ethical halakha law. So, Stephen, this is a complete hypocrisy. It's dangerous. You yes, know? it is. Yes, anyway, it is. Anyway, what I wanted to do next is to see how Trump, at the same time as Sanhedrin... Is this the correct article, though? No. There was a video, actually, I sent you. Where, okay, then, okay. Um, yes. CBS, but Trump... CBS. Is. says he supports the red flag laws as means of gun control. Right, the same day Stephen Sanhedrin came up with Noah Hyde Law as a solution, the Trump comes, no, no, I want red flag laws. I fully support red flag laws, you know. And for those of you so. that do not know what a red flag law is, if someone reports uh, that they consider, and I think as of right now it's mainly a family member, that you could pose a threat as a gun owner, there is no due process. They just come and take your guns and then they figure out later whether or not you have a right to get them back or not. No. And some states already support that. So that now. means you're totally innocent. You know, they claim to read your mind. Do uh, you want to play part of this? No, you can. Yeah, let's play where he speaks about it. Let's, let's get him up here. That's what I want his words. That's the steps he believes the U.S. should take after two deadly mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton this weekend. Mr. Trump zeroed in on a number of areas he wants the government to tackle, such as mental health and violent video games. The president also mentioned one step he'd like to take on the topic of gun control. We must make sure that those judged to pose a grave risk to public safety do not have access to firearms, and that if they do, those firearms can be taken through rapid due process. That is why That's I not due process. for red flag That's laws, not due process. also known as extreme risk protection orders. Right. I want to bring in Ouija Jane right. and Caitlin Huey Burns. Ouija is a CBS News you White House correspondent. We can post a link for that. Anyway, this is a slow process, Stephen. Sneaky process of catering to the Jews in and for the Noahide laws and catering for taking our rights away as American citizens. Well and and, and, and and he mentions he mentions mental health, which they're gonna be working through psychiatry and labeling people mentally sick, Steve. Yes. This is this is all together. I can see it, you know, all this slow process of trying to push their agenda. Now they still have law opposition and I'm calling on citizens of the United States to really learn what is happening learn and study out and search out the matter so you can be on the right side. There is a state gun groups, uh, they're not happy that Trump is supporting red flag laws that should not be under our constitution, okay? And they're saying that they are going to try to do everything they can to stop him. So it doesn't and, and you know, the, the thing is, Jana, these are, these are uh, groups here that no doubt supported the president to get elected as well. And we're not saying, uh, you know, I mean, we have freedom of speech here. We're not a 501c corporation that has to shut up on political issues. Mm -hmm. We're not telling you which side to vote on, though, because we know it's a mess on either side. But the Second Amendment 
should be protected. And I really feel that what we are about to head into in this nation here, and something I believe has been planned for years, mm -hmm. uh, I had stated before in Europe, the moving of the, of the uh, uh, refugees from Syria, Africa, uh, Libya, was always set up because they're going to kill off the Christians. Uh, I believe that they're going to do that here in the United States, but more specifically, they want to bring an economic collapse. They want to bring about uh, civil strife and civil war in this nation. Division I, of um, right. between American people. But why though? Is here. Why? We are seeing now this major push for all Jews to return to the state of Israel. We've been trying to get them to Christ, and but they need that. There's something about this uh, their plan, mm -hmm. and I have to admit, I'm as, as I study these things, I'm becoming more and more getting new revelations of things that I used to think was a yet a future fulfillment, seeing that Christ was fulfilling everything back then. That's we're going to get into that in yes, just a little we're bit. we're going to get into that. And you know what? The Jewish people don't have to be in this political state of Israel to be saved today. And exactly. to accept Jesus Christ and enter the presence with Christ in his kingdom right now, this minute now. Yes. They, that's not a future event. This is now just like Apostle Paul, now is the day of, of salvation. salvation. That's, That's exactly right. right, Anna. So do you want to go next uh, and, and let's look at some of the things that uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Shapiro yes. is saying? Yes. Okay. Uh, we, I have a lot of different things marked here, and I'm going to start. Yes. We'll just kind of recap from the other day and, and no, at number 17. Um, just a little recap. I won't go too deep into that as far as the message on that, but... Uh, just so you can see where Mr. Shapiro is going. And, and, and I do want to say, you know, you said it before as well. It seems that uh, Mr. Shapiro has a very zeal, but the problem is the zeal is more towards a Zionist way of thinking and okay. not for truly for Christ. Well, this is what I would like to say before we do, do this. It seems like you're picking on Shapiro. We are not picking on him, but he's a very big example of what is happening. There are other people and other pastors who are... Many. Haggy is uh, uh, allowing Jewish rabbis to come to his congregation and preach the so-called Jewish gospel, okay? But Mr. Shapira is just so clear, plainly clear of what the agenda is, that if you truly don't know basics, very basics and foundation of Christ's gospel, you can get deceived. And this is happening in Mark Biltz's church. Now, the this is the thing how I see it, and of course it's a conjecture, I'm not a psychologist, psychiatrist, or I'm not a god, and I cannot read hearts. But I see that Mr. Shapiro is very sincere, in he's looking at the scriptures, Steve, similar like you used to look at scriptures, and, and seeing everything as a future event. Right. He doesn't see anything fulfilled in Christ when he came. So I don't really believe Mr. Shapira understands foundation of Christ, Christ's gospel. And I don't think he ever grasped it or that he accepted the true Jesus, Yeshua. Okay, his Yeshua is a Jewish Yeshua or a Jewish Messiah according to the Jewish gospel. And Jewish gospel is not the same gospel as the gospel of Christ. The Jewish gospel is expecting a future Messiah who is going to come to the city of Jerusalem, today's city. I mean, right. The, right now, to this city right there, he's going to just come down and redeem them, give them kingdom, and they're going to uh, impose Noahide laws on nations, Sanhedrin will rule, basically all that's happening. That right. They're building the temple, and Jesus, actually, his Jesus is going to be in that temple. Right. Sanhedrin will be set up. Noahide laws will be imposed. This is the Yeshua of Shapira, okay? But um, he never grasped the true foundation of gospel. My problem is with Mark Biltz. Mark Biltz heard the gospel of Christ in its simplicity, in its purity, in its true foundation, and he abandoned it. And he yeah. has allowed these balls. And, you, and I'm sorry for every person sitting in their congregation. 
These people are stealing the salvation from Gentiles. They're stealing salvation and they're telling you to climb up the other way. Right. All right. They're saying you're yeah. not redeemed. And even though he will say, oh, no, you redeemed individually, but, There's but a corporate redemption. there is another step. And that step is corporate redemption. Now, when I hear the word that he's actually going to use the word corporate redemption. When I hear that word, Steve, the red flags come, fear comes, and I get immediately nervous. You know why? I used to be, and I was raised in a watchtower organization by my Gentile mother, okay? Uh, she was a Catholic who Jehovah's Witnesses knocked on her door one day, and they took her into this organization, and mm -hmm. she managed to persuade almost 90% of all of my Gentile side of the family that uh, watched out is the true gospel where Jesus Christ was not divine and he was a created being and at that time back then they really preached his Archangel Michael okay so uh, basically they were teaching corporate salvation they were telling people you cannot get saved outside of that organization you get out of that organization or you're in this fellowship as an apostate, you're doomed to destruction. You're going to die in Armageddon. That's it. You're dead. You're dead. Right. So you have to be part of that organization and hold on to it, no matter how much bad they do, no matter how much, how many sins they do. It don't matter. God is going to fix it in the future because there is a corporate salvation. Now, the same thing here with Shapira telling this to people, okay? There is a corporate future salvation. If you're not part of it, you don't take destiny upon yourself, destiny of fleshly juice today, all these Talmudic rabbis, if you don't accept Talmudic ways, if you don't, he calls Talmud their treasure. Yes. Okay. Does he also say that Jesus is Metatron? Is that one of his things? Yes. No, yes but remember, does. remember the unlocker of the yes. whole book on it. Okay. Okay. He is Yeshua. You have to understand the Jewish when they the Jews when they say word Yeshua, it's not necessarily Jesus Christ, the same Christ revealed in our scriptures, because to them Yeshua means their salvation means their. A redeemer who will give them this kingdom in fleshly Jerusalem, right. okay, and Sanhedrin and temple. So when they say Yeshua, they already had many Yeshuas, and Shapira even says that every age had Yeshua or Messiah. It was Schneerson, it was every day, he was saying this in right, some other right, videos, understand, right? Understand. So to, when he says the word Yeshua, don't be deceived because ask him for clarification. Clarify who your Yeshua is. He doesn't speak of Jesus Christ of the Bible. Okay. okay. Let's get into this right away then so we can consider. Sorry, our time. I am long winded. So but I just, I, I thought for a second that their journey was over. You follow what I'm telling you? They came to a green pasture. They said, We are saved. We are redeemed. We found the promised land. We are entering in. But there's a word here to us to take. Nobody can enter in their point of rest until Israel go in first. Because Israel is the son of God. They are the firstborn. And unless Israel coming in first, no Gentile in the world, in the universe, will have a complete salvation. Exclamation point. Period. Okay. Now, let, let me clarify yeah, something ahead. now. This is why I say... It's, it's very dangerous, this type of doctrine, because in one way he's correct in what he's saying. Scripturally, salvation would come to Israel first. And it did. And it, but that's the problem. We're <laughs> dealing did. with a fulfilled scripture that's already taken place. And, and to prove this, Yanka, I, I had uh, prepared several different scriptures on this subject right here. Uh, but just to prove that point, you know, we can look again. And, uh, you know, there's several here that I've looked at. 
Uh, and, and we're right now in Hosea chapter 6, once again, like we were the other day. This is the one, and I taught on this. A lot of you guys already know about this, but I taught on this the other day. I had switched over to this. You look down and you see this, and I forget. I, I was thinking I was using just King James, uh, like my Bible thing there. And you point out to me, you said that, yes, in the third day he will raise up and they, uh, that we may live in his presence. And you said that was the resurrection of Christ. Yes. And I, in my own way of thinking, very similar to Shapiro as far as that goes, I had looked at Hosea. Many of the Pentecostal teachers had taught that as well, that Israel, when, when the house of Israel, they would be regathered back in, the fulfillment of this would be in the third day as one day with the Lord is a thousand years, and that we are living in that day, and this is the day that it would be fulfilled. So I understand why he's saying what he's saying. But as you brought that out, I'm ready to, to, to debate over this issue with you. But at the same time, as soon as you said it, I got the revelation that Matthew chapter 27 was the fulfillment in verse 52. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and, and appeared unto many. All right, what was it? It was the third day. He rose on the third day. All right, now, then it forced me, and I'm just going to do this quickly so I save time. I went back to Hosea, and I began to look at this in Hebrew. I'm like, I've been reading after two days. He will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. And so I'm thinking, two days was 2,000 years ago, so he's going to revive us 2,000 years later. I've always taken it that way. Even though I understand Hebrew, I'm not even thinking about reading over here, you know. Me, yamin. Me, yamin. Do you know what me, yamin really means? From the days. Okay? But it's the order that they put on here. He will raise us up. All right? And that's nothing unusual in Hebrew. It's kind of reversed order. Like what's over here is spoken over here, and what's over here is spoken over here. That's the way it's translated. So when they say he will raise us up, okay, veya kimenu is, and he will raise us up. But the first part is that part about that life. Because it literally says, yachayenu miyamin, okay? That means he will give us life. Chaya, his life, like he did, and I won't go into it now, but as he did in the Garden of Eden when he breathed in Adam's nostrils, he says, Ipak be'pa'av nishmat chayim. And Adam became what? A nepesh chaya, a living soul. Why? That kind of life. Jesus, when he breathed on his apostles, he breathed on them after his resurrection. Right? And he said, receive you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just like he was in Genesis. He breathed on his nose and he received it. So it's literally saying that from the days he's going to give life. In other words, to those that had died years ago. All right? Beyom hashlishi. Now we have the definite article. So specifically, I don't even know. I, I can't say emphatically this, but I almost want to say because we have the definite article, hey, and we have beyom hashlishi, that it was literally three days, and I don't know if we can actually type that as 3,000 years. So, as Yana points out, Yakumenu, he will raise up, and we will what? We have that life, the chaya, before his face. Okay? Right before him. So, that scripture of Hosea was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. And one step further, besides that, we also have uh, in Acts, uh, where do I have Acts at here on the screen? In Acts, the second part that was fulfilled as well on that third day, like what we see here, and this is another one that Rabbi uh, uh, Shapira quotes a lot. A lot of people quote this right here. Uh, says that, uh, thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nation, shall even take a hold of a skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And what does Rabbi Shapiro, he focuses on right here, okay? We will go with you, nelecha imchem, 
And then he keeps saying, do you see there? Imchem. That is, we will go with you. That is plural in Hebrew. He keeps focusing and he tells the people and he drives it in. Imchem. Imchem. We will go with you. At the end as well. For we heard, Ki shamanu Elohim Imchem. We hear God is with you. Plural. But he never bothers to focus that when they take a hold of the wing of the garment. He never tells you that it is Ish, one man, Yehudi, that's one Jewish man. The ten people of the nations hear one Jewish man. Judean. Okay, right. Judeans. No, one Judean man. From one man Judean man, Judea. right, from Judea, right. which is Yeshua, that it's because of him they take a hold of. And so therefore, even a scripture that I thought was in the future, so like Shapira, I used to think the same thing too. And I even thought at one time, maybe it's the two witnesses, totally ignoring the fact that it's a Jewish man. I have to thank Sister Jennifer for bringing that to my attention as well. She said, look at it in the Hebrew. Tell your husband. Tell my wife. Tell him, look at it. It's in the Hebrew. Yes, it's right there. She did. Right? She told me. Tell so, your husband. It's the wing of one man. That's right. So then we have to go to Acts real quick, and I'll just sum this up for you. When you come in here to the book of Acts here, just start right here. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, I've got to clarify something here because this is also quoted by uh, Michael Brown. Dr. Michael Brown, he says that the gospel was of, uh, salvation is of the Jews, mm -hmm. right? Well, it just so happened when he was talking about that the other day, I was kind of perplexed by that. And so, uh, let me pull it up real fast here. We are in the book of Acts. All right, we're in the second chapter. And, and when he did that, I'm like thinking, wait a minute, something doesn't sound right there. And, you know, I'm looking at, and I don't know how well you guys can see this, but when you're dealing with the word eudeos, and I've done a lot of research on this, and there's actually, there was a writer you brought up to me that actually a scholar that brought this out as well. They translate this Jews, but it's actually Judean. In other words, like American, or like Floridian, right. or Texan. Georgian. Texan. It's not literally or... Jews, it's those that were from yeah. Judea, mm -hmm. okay? Right. So, when these devout men that came of, see, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation. Remember how the Jews are scattered to the four winds of the earth? Now they've been gathered. Wow, then you mean they've been gathered? Out of every nation under Already. heaven. Already. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Devout men. Why devout? Because remember, even the Jews still believe to this day, if there's 10 men that are devout, righteous in other words, that are praying that God will spare the nation. Well, they, were, they brought these Jews from every one of the nations in the world. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Just like they were Judeans. You know, Jesus went to Judea many times for feasts or this or that. But let me tell you, he was right. actually Galilean, living among Galileans. And the 12 apostles were from different, you know, some of them were Judeans, some of them Galileans. One was from Jordan even. So, do you understand? Right. He chose this, among well, many. Right, and this we know is speaking of their, from where their ancestry is from, because then we find out, they tell you where they're from. Perithians, Medes, Elamites, wow. dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontius, Asia, like Chinese and, and it stuff. And continues. Phrygia, yeah. Pamphylia, Egypt, and in the parts Part of, of Libya, Syria, strangers of Rome, Jews, Jews and proselytes. Because a lot of, of these sect, Jewish sects, still came to Christ. You yes, know? and that was the other thing. So it's both Jew and Gentile alike that are there. And so, of right. course, when they're amazed about this, you know, they so, now it says others mocking. Now, the others are not them. Ah. Okay? The others were mocking, but they're not part of that. What is that? That's that Pharisaic Pharisees. group that's there. Right. right? 
These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, said, These, they, they, these men are not drunk as you suppose they are. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Said to them, You men of Judea and all of you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, that these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And I shall come and pass in the, uh, shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon your sons, your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall see dreams and on my servants and my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit the Chayah they'll pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above signs and earth beneath the blood fire vapor and smoke and everybody's looking for the, the moon to turn to blood they're looking for all kinds of They're heavenly looking signs. For signs that we can and generate. here it is the, the wicked generation keeps looking for a sign Yeshua said, Jesus made the comment about that. He's speaking to the Pharisees, and he don't just say wicked. He said an adulterous generation right. seeketh after a sign, and they don't get any sign but the sign of Jonah. Yes, exactly. You know why he said adulterous generation? Because the Pharisees were part of the adultery that took place while they were in Babylon when yes. the chief priests and the Levites were chief among the sin and they had taken in the Hittite, the Perzite, the Jebusite, they were Nephilim, they mixed their blood bloodline and Jesus called them out. That's why they want to silence what we're saying. That's why they call people anti-Semite to tell you who the Pharisees yes. really are. That's not all Jews, and that's not even all Pharisees, because right. Paul was a Pharisee, right. he had Nicodemus was a Pharisee, yes. but not all of them came out of even, that corrupt Even among line. them, there is a little tiny remnant that needs to come out. Yes. Yes. So the whole point is, those scriptures were fulfilled. Yes. And so, yes, the Jews did get it first. But then we also see in the gospel, Peter says this, when, when they came and they had Gentiles that were believing, he says, can we forbid water to these? And they have received what? The Holy Spirit. They have received what? The Chaim, yes. as we have. Yes, and there is a prophecy in the Old Testament that Gentiles will get hold of him. Hold exactly. Him. Oh, my gosh. And, and not only that, Steve. Okay, one more time. Go back to that third day, he will raise us up. Aren't we crucified with him and raised with him when we yes. are born again? Yes. yes. When we are born again individually right now, we die to ourselves, we crucified with him, and we are completely new creation, raised up as a new creature. Yes. And that's the foundation of the true gospel on salvation. Yes. And this is what Shapiro is missing. He's missing it, and he's telling these people, he built his church, that they still don't have salvation and they need to do something else and another step and wait till some Jews will get special kingdom. Right. Okay. So this now, is wrong. It's another gospel. You've made a good point. And I, and I haven't brought one scripture that I haven't even shared with you yet. Right. But like you said, let's go back to this third day. All right. So they receive his life, God's life, Chaya, which is God's own life. All right. They receive those from the days gone by. They receive it. All right, the Yom, they receive it when? On the third day, he's going to raise them up. Okay, so I'm not raising up those from the days gone by. That's literally what it's saying and here. And it happens. Right, and then they, right here, oh, I'm sorry, you guys don't see that. Then, then here, they're receiving that life and they're going to live in his presence. Now, I'm going to show you, not only did uh, uh, Hosea allude to this, Ezekiel did as well. In chapter, I believe it's chapter 30, oh, wait a minute, chapter, wait a minute, let me pull it up over here so I can remember where it's at. Chapter 37 of Ezekiel, verse 13. As for the likeness of living creatures, there appear, wait a minute, calls it, wait a minute, it may be different, and Hebrew is a little different than that one, so maybe I'm in the wrong chapter, hang on. Oh, I am, I'm in the wrong chapter, that's why. Give me a second here. Chapter 37, verse 13. And you shall know, all right, back up just a little bit. And in, in King James, I think it's verse 13, though. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Why? Why? Because they're not actually in the land of Israel. They're some other place. Wherever they, when they died and their spirit left this earth, they're somewhere else. So how do you get back to the land of Israel? When they open the graves. 
And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, O oh my people. When was that fulfilled? Matthew chapter 27. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves. That's how they knew that he was the Lord. Wow. That's how they knew he was the Lord. And Hosea also saw it that on the third day he would raise, when he says he'll raise us up, when? On the third day. Yes. When? What third day? After Christ's resurrection. Mr. Shapira, I beg you, I beg you as a Jewish brother, I'm, I love you, my brother. I'm not here to try to ridicule you. I see you, you fall into a similar path that I did as well. You know, this is nothing against you. No, it's just a, it's a different gospel that takes salvation yes. away from people by putting these events in a future when they already happen. We, what do you think that these 2,000 years, the remnant of Jews didn't get saved? The, well, those who believed on Christ, that they had to wait for now? He's doing, like, he's doing um, just like Paul did when he was Saul. Yeah. Right. You don't realize it, but you're killing the Christians. You're yes. willing to allow them to go to their deaths because you don't fully have the revelation yet. Don't be a thief and a robber. You're telling them that they need to do something else, that they are still not saved when they know Jesus. Let, let me show something to you guys here, okay? Let's go, to, let's go to 23. This is where he talks about the corporate salvation. And before you do that, can I say something? Sure, too? sure. Okay, you know how when Yeshua was Jesus Christ of the scriptures revealed in our scriptures, when I say what Yeshua, that's who I mean. But I want to say that when he was raised, Stephen, the veil rent in two. Now, that was a very important event when the, the veil rent in two and suddenly the holy of holies was visible now until then stephen the priests had to be examined completely naked because they had to be with no disease completely perfect no older than 50 years old they couldn't be women like you cannot be a woman there was a strict who can enter holy or holy who can see all that and who can be priest? When that rent, when that veil rent, and anybody coming by could look and see any woman, any 80 year old, any sick, any, anybody, any child could go and see suddenly. That was miraculous. That, that was unheard of. That was mind blowing, Steve. Yes, yes it was. Why they did God die. did this? Why did God did this? Because he wanted to show you that when he rose up, it's finished. The redemption is accomplished. He has done it for all of us individually. And now everybody can come in. Jew, Gentile, sick, woman, old, young. He does not care. Okay, it's all open to all. Salvation is now, and it doesn't depend on some some Sanhedrin and nations coming and imposing Noahide laws and giving Jews some kind of kingdom and teaching that Gentiles have no divine spark and there are animals and they are just slaves. You know, this is antichrist kingdom and it might sound and look and bible might be used and a lot of people deceived with it but those who have foundation of true gospel will never believe you and they will stand true to christ jesus and i want to open eyes of every person sitting in my Bill's church examine the gospel of christ all over again come back to your first love to the day when you were saved and do not listen to Amen. wolves. Amen. Amen. Let's see it. Listen to this. Can you talk today? Yes, are you sure about that? In order to do that, you must risk everything that you own personally for the corporate salvation. Here we and go. I want to underline the word, the corporate salvation oh of the God. house of Israel. Yes, it's not about you. It is not about you, it's about our cooperation. You are a part of the cooperation, and the cooperation is called Israel. That means that one day you have to be a mailman, one day you have to wash dishes, 
One day you do other thankless job, but at the end of the day, it's not about you. It's about the cooperation. All right, and stop. somewhere along the, the journey here, the tribe of God. There we go, the corporate salvation. Unless okay. you uh, give up everything you own, unless you take up the destiny of fleshly Jews. You know, not to mention they have these 13 points they are sending to churches. 250 churches, organizations have signed up. You cannot preach Jesus to Jews, gospel to Jews. You have to die for any Jew. There is the word any, any Jew. Just because he's a Jew by race. You have to die for him. This is what they're doing right now, Stephen. I mean, this is absolutely insane, this corporate salvation idea. It's cultic. Mm -hmm. It's a cult. Sure, sure it is. All right? It's, That's it's, how you'll get a Barabbas spirit released yeah, upon it you. It is a climbing of this other way. So he's a thief and a robber. Yeah. We the drink of the water of the wells, we will go on what? The King Highway. Oh. Listen, this is a prophetic language. The King Highway. We will not turn to the right. We will not turn to the left. Please let us pass. This is the root of the spirit in the world that trying to rob the Jewish people of coming to the contact with the God of Israel. Oh, my God. Stop it. Any person who said... Nobody is robbing Jewish people, you do. Yep. You, with Mark Bills and all the similar preachers and teachers who agree with you and have you as guests, and they are all robbers. You are the robber of the salvation of Jews. Why? You signed that we cannot preach the true gospel to Jewish people. That is a thing. And you're robbing salvation from them yeah. and giving them different gospel. And that's the truth. So you reversed it. Yes, it is. Another part here. He's a Christian and he does not hold in value the land of Israel. Wow. As the land of the Jewish people is not anti Semite, he's anti Yeshua. Oh, wow. And yes, I will say it publicly there have been Christians who've been attacking Pastor Belt recently and myself who call Israel the new Babylon. What? Physically, Israel, how can that. one do that? Somebody if else Israel is not in the land, that. they cannot fulfill the covenant. If they cannot fulfill the covenant, they cannot be the people God called them to be. Are you following what I'm telling you? Now, there again, the whole point is the covenant was already fulfilled. It is by Christ. This is why, Christ is fulfilled. this is why, as you pointed out to me earlier today, this is why we have friends in Israel right now that can believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Right. As Jewish believers where their families and all their generations, the, myself included, my, my all the generations were Jews. They never converted. Stephen, I'm preparing for the conference that we are having a, a lot of information uh, as a researcher. Uh, I'm going to present you with information based on the research. And there were so many Jewish people, a little remnant, but still pretty significant number, but a little tiny remnant, throughout 2,000 years that came to salvation through Christ and true gospel. And they have exposed the Talmud. And that's why we had these Talmud trials and Talmud right. burnings. It's not because... People hated Jews. It's because what's in that Talmud, really. Uh, so you tell me that all of these years, 2,000 years, Mr. Shapiro, the Jews could not be saved. The, the Jews who believed on Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are not saved. Where are they right now? Okay, so do you see, Stephen, the different gospel they're preaching? Yes, absolutely. And it's all based on wrong interpretation of scripture, based on uh, Schofield, Schofield influence, and yes. Darby, and all of those. You know. uh, I don't know if you have any more you want to get into, but I, I do want to remind the people of the conference coming up. Right now, we have about 40 seats left. Uh, available. We did the count. If you have sent a message on Israeli News Live on this particular article, Orlando Conference, August 17th, 
everyone that has said they were coming. I have one person, I think, or maybe two that said they could not make it. You're all approved. Uh, so I won't be actually going in each individual say, yes, you're approved. There is space for all of you. I think we had 112 thus far confirmed they're coming from from all the way from California, all the way from New York, wow. coming down Pennsylvania. Precious we have people, people from I'm all over the United States coming. Looking forward to meet you one on one. Yes. And I want to I tell you that Steve, too. my husband, has also prepared a very good message for you. With several messages. He's going to connect Edom, understanding of Edom. We're going to talk about Book of Revelation, fulfillment of who the beast really is, the connection of Vatican and Sanhedrin and. Talmudic Jews and how they connect together, what has happened in history. We are, I'm going to bring you a lot of historical events that have happened. I mean, it's going to be a full feast of information. Uh, so you will need a pen and a pay and, and some kind of a notebook. So, you, you know, it's really hard because I have uh, learned and as a teacher, I know that the attention span of, of uh, an adult is about right. 45 minutes at max. So well, I don't know. I've made a few changes <laughs> after I took out uh, for Deanne Loper that she will not be able to make. But I wanted some people to see this here. Uh, we did do a little bit of the schedule changes, so you're aware of. We still start at 9.30 a.m. I will speak on That's the remnant at that me, time. Stephen. Well, you don't have to. You, you're not speaking <laughs> until after lunch. At 11.30, uh, that's when we will break for lunch, maybe a few minutes early for that. I put a two-hour lunch window in there, and the reason being is because it's hard for us to get out the door to run to lunch, but uh, also so you have plenty of time to go and come back, because the rest of the day, it'll be back-to-back. -back. Yana will go next at 1.30. She has a two-hour window. Uh, myself from 3.30 to 5, an hour and a half. Uh, and then again, uh, uh, Yana will speak at 5 o'clock. I put her basically an hour and a half. We don't limit Yana the time because you never know how long that might be because she's like I am. 6.30 p.m., we're going to do an informal questions and answers there. It's also a chance for us to get to know you guys a little bit. So I'm kind of glad it's not going too, too late in the day. Uh, I think we're allowed to be there till about 9 p.m. and then we have to actually leave. Well, so. we will do it a little bit earlier because we also, I'm sure, will be very hungry because even during lunch, we never have time to eat. In fact, last time when we had lunch, I bought my lunch and I left it as I bought it because we talked so much with people, I couldn't eat and talk. So uh, This time, I'll make sure you get out to lunch. No, that's okay. I'm able to not eat the entire day. But evening, I'll be hungry. I'm kind of like a night eater, you know. So okay. we will have to like we'll cut it to 7.30 and then go for Okay, so yeah, we'll do about an hour for questions and answers there. And then we'll then we'll head out then at 7.30. So and we'll we will have plenty there. of coffee, guys. So don't worry yes. about that. So yeah. anyway, Embassy Suites by Hilton at 225 Shorecrest Drive. Uh, be sure if you're coming, if you haven't already seen this on the website If there. you are a spy, please don't come. I will know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we'll, just, we'll have very good security there. We'll do, it'll be very similar to that of what was in, uh, in Kansas. No one knew about it, but we had uh, seven uh, secret uh, guards that were there uh, right. to ensure the safety of the meeting there. It'll be no different now. Uh, I kind of like doing that, especially from my past. That way it makes it harder for people to know who is the one that is watching over you. So, mm -hmm. okay. but anyway, so pray for us, pray for the meeting. And, uh, and also we look forward to seeing you come. We're praying for your safety, for your traveling. Uh, so, and also if you want to support the ministry, uh, please remember uh, that your, your love and gifts to this ministry is what helps us. Um, and so we have our address here. It's on our website. You can also donate right, right there online, israelinewslive.org. And, um, well, I thought it was going to let it do that. I guess I have to we go back are undergoing there. a lot of changes. Uh, our website is doing a lot of changes. We have a bookstore, but we still have not got not everything. Not only that, we will have almost everything yeah. changed very soon. So yeah, we're gonna. We still. We've got to fix some issues with the bookstore. A lot of changes we made. Some things got kicked off that, that need to be there. Uh, we also are going to be adding our uh, some DVDs. This conference, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to take a compilation of videos, conferences, seven Noahide laws. 
uh, the Talmudic law, things Our like that. Chats and then they're, they're right. DVDs. They're going to be. Yeah. We're going to make a set of that of the, some of the better things. Eventually, it'll make it to the bookstore where you guys can get this for future use. Uh, so you know, we'll try to do we that. have a lot of work to do. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. And uh, again, I don't know how long we'll leave this up here on YouTube. Uh, if we can leave it up for a while, we will. But it will be over on Patreon. Uh, dot com forward slash Israeli News Live. Uh, some of those we're putting over on our bit shoot as well. So those of you, uh, we've got a, a couple of new videos over on bit shoot. I know you don't get to see that from this side here. Uh, so check out bit shoot Israeli News Live as well. And again, I'm out of hair. So uh, thank you guys so yes. much and and good evening. Good evening. Let me find. Well, I can't get the thing to work.